Good afternoon, everyone. We'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our Sunday service. And we pray that as you uh, join with us, that the Lord would bless you. And uh, may the Lord watch over you and keep you. And uh, if you uh, would like to have someone to pray with you, then you can feel free to call the number on the screen. And uh, if you get an answering machine, leave a name and number, and we can get back to you. May the Lord bless you. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and they are safe. Let's sing this true a couple of times. The name of the Lord.
going to sing a chorus for uh, the young people, for our children. We're going to sing, I'm in the Lord's Army. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. I'm too young to march in the infantry, to ride in the cavalry. I'm too young to zoom for the enemy. But I'm in the Lord's Army now. You can't sing this one sitting down and do the action. So I'm going to invite you to stand and uh, we'll sing it together. I'm in the Lord's Army.
I dare say Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could sing this chorus very well and never failed me yet. Jesus' love has never failed me yet. This one thing I know that wherever I go, Jesus' love, even in the fiery furnace. Amen. Love that story. To think that three Hebrew children <coughs> had enough guts, I would say, enough faith, enough to believe that their God was going to see them through. And that's just what he did. We do have some prayer requests before I take Major's message on her. <laughs> First on the list, Major Bill, you're going to, be, going to be glad to hear that, that you're first on the list. And we're praying for you, brother, in these days that God indeed might do a work in your life. That his healing power is just the same as it was in days of old. Shirley Pitcher, praying for Shirley and for Glenn Lee as well. Uh, prayer request, please pray for my father, Daniel. Daniel Party, Lucas is dead. He's scheduled for surgery on Thursday, 21st of January. Remember, Lucas is dead. And we will, also remember you in our prayers. We also have prayer requests for Dave Cooper and Diane Rysick. Diane Rysick. And so I dare say there's many more prayer requests that you have upon your heart as well. I know I have a lot of prayer requests for our children, for our family members that's not yet saved. And uh, if there's anyone that got a prayer request, want to lift your hand, just let us know what it is. We can certainly uh, pray for that as well. We have three, three hands raised. And I guess there's more than that, four, five, six. There's a lot of prayer requests that need to be brought before the throne of grace. God bless you. There is so much in our days in which we're living in, and so much happening around us, and we need to stick close to God. Amen? Amen. We need to stick close to God. And no matter what the consequences, no matter what the situation is in our lives, no matter what we might hear tomorrow, uh, God is, is in the fire with us. He's in the fire with us. He's always there. Never failed me yet, although we failed him many times. Think back over my Christian walk and I'm thinking about many times that I failed him, but he has never failed me. Bless his name. And he will never fail us. We're going to sing that and then we're going to conclude with prayer. Never fail me yet. This is one thing I know that we're here I go. College. Jesus' love has never failed me. Never fail.
Father, your word says to ask and we shall receive, to seek and we shall find. To knock and the door shall be opened unto us. We're coming to a God who can meet our every need, Lord. And we can trust you, Lord, with every circumstance of life. And for that we say thank you. Thank you, God. And we just want to bring our prayer concerns before you just now, Lord, those that's names have been read out. Lord, you know their need. Those that raise their hand, you know their need. And those who just have pondered them in their hearts, Lord, you know their need as well. And we're coming to a big, wonderful God who can meet our every need. Father, we just ask this evening that you would present yourself around us here in this place. We have felt your spirit from the first course on to now. And we know that that won't change because where the spirit of God is, Lord, we just ask that you would surround us again. Where you are, the spirit of God is. And so, Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you, God, for meeting our need thus far. We know we're living in a day, Lord, where there's a lot of turmoil. A lot of things happening in our world today where we have to put fences up and we have to put guards on, on the scene for people to be inaugurated into the presidency and into, into the United States. Just seen it this morning. God, the day that we're living in is not a good day. The day that we're living in Lord, we need you in our lives every moment, every second of every day. There's so much turmoil in our land. And so, Lord, we ask that you would just center yourself around us as we bring our cares and concerns for you. For those that are having surgery, for those that are battling cancer, for those that have heart disease, for those uh, that are not feeling well these days, Lord, we pray that you would minister unto them as only you can. You are the great physician to sympathize in Jesus. Yes. For Major Bill, Lord, we pray again that you might minister unto him, yes. that your healing touch might be centered around him this day, yes. and that he will begin to start feeling much better in these days. Yes. Lord, for those that are not feeling well spiritually, not feeling well mentally, Lord, there's so much uh, on, on people's plates these days. We ask, oh God, that you would be in the midst of them and that you will be there to bless them. Lord, we can trust you. We never once has failed to meet our need. And Lord, for that we give you thanks and praise. Lord, we ask your blessing upon the remainder of this service. Seeing as we sing your songs and praises and especially as we look into your word. Lord, we pray your anointing upon Major Velma as she stands today. Lord, if you would anoint your servant, you would anoint us as listeners that we will get out of this message today just what you planned for it to be. And Lord, it might there be someone in this service today that yet hasn't sought and found you as Lord and Savior. God, we will pray earnestly just now that you would speak to their hearts and help them to realize the urgency of the hour and that this would be the day that they would cry out to you, what must I do to be saved? Yes. And that this evening will be a time of rejoicing in Father's house. Because one has come home. And I sought you to be their friend and Savior. Continue to minister us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children say. The sign says there is a record book. To be well known of men I may not ever be. I'm sure my name will not go down in history. There will be no marble plaques to tell of my good deeds, nor any great praise to honor me.
Thank you, Randy and Lennis, for that song. That's the first time that I've heard that song. And uh, wonderful words. My name will not be lost or forgotten. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and, uh, you know, in this world, people can forget our names. Right? They see us, and they may have heard our name. But the next time they see us, they don't remember our name. But thank God, our name will not be forgotten. Amen. And our name will not be lost. And I'm going to move that just to give me space so I don't knock that thing over possibly. But I trust and pray that everyone here today can say, without a doubt, that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. And if you can't say that without certainty, then today you need to make that decision to give your life to Him. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you because you have made provision so that we can be forgiven of our sins and we can have our name recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that one day when we see you face to face, we will not need to be afraid or ashamed because the blood of Jesus will have covered our sins and we will be clean and we will stand before God acceptable through the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, as your word goes forth here today, we pray that it will have its intended effect, that you would use it, Lord, for your own glory, and that, Lord, I would not be seen, I would not be heard, but the voice of the Holy Spirit will be heard today. And Lord, may we respond in obedience to the Spirit's leading in whatever way He speaks to us this afternoon. We pray in the wonderful, matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Dad, I don't even know why they let me on the team. Did you do your best, son? I know I was going to miss it before I even kicked it. Your actions will always follow your beliefs, David. Dad, I can't even kick it straight. And I can't walk. Should I just stay home and pout about it? If you accept defeat, David, then that's what you'll get. the movie Facing Giants. Anybody? That's some. Well, let me tell you, you need to go get the movie, watch it. Uh, this is David, a 145-pound soccer player turned backup kicker for the Eagles football team. And in this scene, just prior to this, their team had lost the game. And David has not been very successful with his playing. And he's feeling discouraged and defeated. And David's dad says to him, when you accept defeat, defeat is what you get. When you accept defeat, Defeat is what you get. Now how do we respond when things are not going the way that we want them to or the way that we expect? How do we respond when we are going through a difficult situation? What is our response when we are facing trial? The natural response for all of us 
is first of all to say, why, God? Why? And then the second statement is, please deliver me. You see, we don't like trials. Anybody ever volunteer for them? Uh -uh. We don't appreciate the valley experiences, the hurt. They can be long. They can be difficult. And we can easily get discouraged. And sometimes we are ready to give it up. We're ready to toss in the towel. We're ready to call it quits. When things come our way that we didn't anticipate, things that are unpleasant, things that are downright painful, it's easy to give in to discouragement and it's easy to feel defeated. I want to tell you, friends, that God does not promise that difficulties will not come our way. You can search the scripture. Nowhere in the Bible does God promise that because we follow him, things will be easy, smooth, and pleasant. As a matter of fact, we are told that the opposite will be true. That we will be persecuted because we are followers of Jesus Christ. God does not promise that he's going to remove the difficult situations. He does not promise that difficult things will not come, that trials or challenges will not be a part of our life. But I tell you what God does promise. He promises that he will be with us and he promises that he will see us through. He says, I will not necessarily take away the difficulty or the challenge or the trial or the obstacle. But he says, I will be with you and I will see you through. And we have accounts in scripture that demonstrate the mighty hand of God at work. And there are many, but I am going to focus on two this morning. And we see God's children facing Obstacles that are beyond what they are capable of handling, but we see how God provides for them. In Daniel chapter 3, that uh, Violet read to us earlier, <coughs> it is the account of the three Hebrew children. And they are in a foreign land. But they have good reputations. They have good reputations. But King Nebuchadnezzar, as it tells us, what is it he does? He sets up an image of gold and he sets out the order that everyone's got to bow down and worship this golden image. And he gives the order that anyone who does not bow down and worship this golden image that he has put in place. Well, they're in serious trouble because the fiery furnace is going to be their end. In verses 5 and 6, of course, we know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego they're followers of God, and they're going to be true to God no matter what. And so they don't bow down to worship this golden image. And of course, uh, word gets to King Nebuchadnezzar. There's always somebody who's going to report it off the line. And they say, do you know that these Hebrew people are defying your order? They didn't bow down to worship the golden image. And so Nebuchadnezzar calls him in and he says, I've heard this report, how you've disobeyed my decree. You're not doing what was ordered to be done. And he says, I'm going to give you a chance. And when the music starts, and if you fall down, you worship this golden image, then I'll let you off the hook. But if not, you're going to be 
be cast into the fiery furnace. But the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fall down? Do they give in to pressure? Do they cave? Not on your life. Not on your life. They refuse. They refuse to bow down to worship the image of gold. They defy the decree of the king rather than deny their God. What is it they say? They say in verse. 16. Now this is being brave. They're saying this to the king who holds their life in his hand. And it says, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this manner. And they go on to say, verse 17, If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us. But, but, even if he does not, we will still not bow down and worship your golden image. We know God is able. But maybe God wants to use us in some other way and maybe he's choosing to let us die in that fiery furnace. But no matter what they say, we will not deny our God. And so, we know, don't we, if, you, if you're familiar with this portion of scripture and this story, we know, don't we, that they would not bow down. They would not deny their God. They have faith and confidence in God. Our God is able. Our God is able. But they were willing to accept whatever God's will might be. Now that, friends, is not always easy. When you pray for healing and healing does not come. And we lose a loved one. You see, our idea of healing and God's idea of healing can be totally different ideas. But when a child of God goes home, they are healed. But it is difficult when God's way and our way are opposing ways. And we can find it difficult. And we can feel discouraged. Because God's not doing it the way we wanted him to. Or expected him to. But the Hebrew children said, no matter what, we will be true to God, no matter what. And the king was furious. Verse 19. It says that he ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. Seven times hotter. It was so hot that the scripture tells us those who were throwing Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the furnace, they were killed. They weren't even in the fire. And they were killed. <laughs> Luke 
Look at what they do to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They had them bound. They weren't going to just take them, toss them in. They tied them up. Look at verse 23. It says they were firmly tied. They made sure that there's no way they were breaking these these ropes or chains or whatever they used to bind them. They were firmly tied when they were thrown into the fiery furnace. Well, they, they were really making sure that they weren't escaping the penalty for having disobeyed the king's orders. But our God is a mighty God. Amen. And when God delivers, he gives a complete deliverance. Verse 25. Let's go to verse 24 first. King Nebuchadnezzar left to his feet in amazement, and he asked the advisors, weren't there three men we tied up and threw into the fire? And they said, certainly okay. And he said, look, I see four men. We put in three. Where did the fourth one come from? I see four men, they are unbound, unharmed, Hallelujah. and walking around in the fire. Amen. Our God delivers a complete deliverance. They are loose, walking around, and just look at what the scripture says. Their hair was not singed. Their clothes was not damaged. And not even the smell of smoke. Not even the smell of smoke. Now you know how easily you can get the smell of smoke on you. You get in a room with a group of smokers. And you'll find out how quickly you can get tainted with the smell of smoke. Scripture says not even the smell of smoke was on them. When God gives a deliverance, he gives a complete deliverance. They acknowledged the power of God. They came out of the furnace. And of course, Nebuchadnezzar is astounded that they survived this fire that was seven times hotter than usual, that though they had been bound and tied when they were thrown in, were walking around without anything to hold them back. And he is astounded. Verse 28, what happens? Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Praise be to their God. There is no one, there is no one who can save in this way. You see, what was intended to be destruction for these three men of God was used to bring glory to God. And when we're going through the trial and we're experiencing the challenge, and we're facing the obstacles. We cannot see in the moment how God can use our trials and our challenges and our difficulties, but God can use it for His glory. God does not promise to take us out of the storm, but He promises to be with us 
in the storm and to see us through. And it can use our storm for the benefit of others. Turn over a couple of chapters to Daniel chapter 6. <clears throat> Now we're looking at Daniel. And in the first few verses of this chapter, this is what it says about Daniel, verse 3. Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators of satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Now, wherever we go, wherever we are and whoever we're, we're encountering along the way should it be so said of us that we have distinguished ourselves and that there are exceptional qualities in us you see if we claim christ as savior wherever we go whatever we do we are representing the god we serve May it ever be said of us that they are exceptional followers of God. But he was about, Daniel was about to be given administrative rights and powers in the whole kingdom. He was going to be in charge, second to the king. Now that didn't make a lot of people happy. Why? Because the, this Daniel was a foreigner. And now he's going to become second in command to the king. Oh, no, 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 that can't be. Not going to have it. So you see, they, they set up a plot. Verse 4. They all get together as a group. And you see, they try to find charges against Daniel. In his conduct, you know, with the government of, of their province. But it says that they couldn't find anything corrupt in his workings. Because he was what? Trustworthy? He wasn't corrupt? You find a man in politics that's not corrupt, it's difficult to find, isn't it? And I'm not saying they're all tired with one bro. <laughs> He was neither corrupt nor negligent. So you see, they finally decided if they were going to get anything on Daniel, it had to do something with his, his God, with following God. So they're very conniving. Chapter 6, so they went as a group, it says, to the king. And they told the king to enforce a decree that anyone who prays to any god or man within the next 30 days except to you, O king, shall be thrown into the lion's den. And they wanted it put in writing so that law couldn't be altered. So once the king put his seal on it, it couldn't be changed. Now that's what you call pretty conniving. So the law was set in order. No one was allowed to pray to anyone except to the king for the 30 days. And what does it say of Daniel? Verse 10. When Daniel learned the decree, did he find a, a hiding place to go and pray? It says he went home to his upstairs room where the windows 
open towards Jerusalem and three times a day got down on his knees and prayed. He was making no secret of it. He was doing as he had always done, regardless of what the consequences might be. He was being watched. Verse 11. When these, then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if people were following us to try to find out something about us in regards to our faith? They were watching him. And so the minute, the minute they see Daniel pray, what do they do? They run to the king. Oh, we want to report someone's not listening to your command, and it's none other than Daniel, this one that you're trusting to be sent in command. And verse 14, it tells us, that, that the king was rather upset when he heard this. And uh, it says that the king was determined to rescue Daniel and he made every effort. But you see, he had signed the decree that could not be changed. And so Daniel had to meet with the fate of being tossed into the lion's den. And you might say that his fate was sealed. Verse 17, literally sealed. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, it says. And the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles so that David's situation might not be changed. There was no escape. There was no escape. And the king says, Daniel, servant of the living God, as your God, has he been able to rescue you? You see, the king lay on his bed that night. He couldn't sleep. He tossed and turned all night long. And he hoped that by some, by some means his God might be able to deliver him. And he runs the next morning. And calls into the den. Daniel, was your God, was your God able to deliver you? And of course, David calls, Daniel calls off. My God has delivered me. He shut the mouths of the lions and they have not touched me. They're like little kittens. They have not harmed me. And then what does the king do? It says, verse 23, the king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the dead, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in God. He had not a scratch. Not a scratch. Then move down to verse 26, this is what the king does. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. In every part of my kingdom, people must fear Fear and reverence the God of Daniel. That's what we need in our age, isn't it? Yeah. 
for our nation to be a nation that fears and reverence God. Our God, when he delivers, he delivers completely. Our God is able to see us through no matter what the situation. We're going to watch one more video clip from the same movie and then I'll finish my message for this morning. Two seconds, Grant. We've got time for a Hail Mary. No, no, the defense is too strong for the pain. No, we can't run it. That's our only option. You got to kick it, man. Dang it. I need a 51 yard field goal. Coach, I can't kick that far. David, they've been stopping the run of the pass all night. You're my best option. Coach, the farthest I've ever kicked is a 39 yarder. There's no way I can kick a 51 yard field goal. I believe you can. Your job is to do the best you can with the results up to God. I need you on that field. Our field goal unit! Grant, we've got to throw it. He can't kick it from there. It's too far. No, it's not. What are you doing? I'm preparing for rain. I don't understand this, but with two seconds left on the clock, Coach Grant Taylor and the Shallow Eagles are putting the game in the hands of a 145-pound backup kicker. This is not a good move on Grant Taylor's part. He even has to kick into the wind. David! He's not ready, Grant. He don't think he can do it. I don't have any more timeouts. Call a timeout, Bobby Lee. This kid can't kick that far. Call that timeout. Call a timeout anyway and let's ice him. Hey, come here. David, are you telling yourself you're going to miss this kick? Coach, it's too far. Listen to me. Do you think God could help you make this kick? Do you believe it, David? Yeah, if he wants to. So do I. But you have got to give me your best and leave the rest up to him. Will you do that for me? David, whether you make this field goal or not, we're going to praise him. But don't you walk off this field having to mean less than your best. Can I help you? Don't touch me. I'm standing for my son. God, help me make this kick. Kick it now! Kick it now! The kick is up. It's on its way. It's long enough. It's high enough. Does it have the distance? It does! It's done! So just to highlight, two seconds to the end of the game, the main kicker has been injured, so the backup kicker, David, has been asked to step in. He's asked to kick 51 yards. He says, I've only ever kicked 39. You're asking too much. He's going to be kicking into the wind, which is going to make it even more difficult. The coach says this, give your best, leave the rest with him. Give your best and leave the rest with him. Isn't that a good motto for us to live by as followers of Jesus Christ? We give our best and we leave the rest with him. When there are challenges that we don't know how to overcome, we do our best and we leave the rest with him. When we are going through the tri trials and it is painful and it is difficult, we do our best and we leave the rest with him. We can trust God to help us.
us. God says, God doesn't promise to take us out of the storms, but he says, I will be with you and I will provide a way through. Do your best and leave the rest with him. Isaiah 43 verses 2 and 3 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I will be with you and I will see you through. Do your best and leave the rest with him. Let us pray. Right. Heavenly <clears throat> Father, we thank you today because you have given us your promise that you would never leave us or forsake us. And Lord, there are times in life when we are facing difficulties and the way is challenging. And Lord, we don't know which way to turn sometimes. And sometimes we feel like giving in and giving up. But you have said that you would never leave us or forsake us. And though we may have to go through the trials, and sometimes the way may be dark, you have promised that you will be there with us and that you will provide a way through. Lord, you know each individual bound in your presence. And we come here on Sundays and we all look nice and we have our smiles. And there may be hidden deep in the heart cares that are weighing down. And Lord, we're keeping it to ourselves because we don't want to share our burdens with everybody. But Lord, we can share our burdens with you. And we can cast our cares upon you because you care for us. And Lord, you know each person here today. You know everyone's need. You know the concerns that they might have. You know the cares that might be weighing down heavily upon us. But Lord, today may we turn to you, the God who says, that though we walk through the fire, we shall not be burned, and the flames will not set us ablaze. But that you, our God, will be with us, and you will deliver us. Move by your Holy Spirit in these moments. Have your way, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing together the song, In Christ Alone. My hope is found. He is my light when the way is dark. He is my strength when I am weak. He is my song when I can't find the words of praise. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ, I stand. Victory through Him and Him alone. Today, if you have a need, bring it to him. You want to kneel where you are if the Spirit leads you that way. We're on hollow, hollow ground. We're meeting one-on-one -on -one with God in these moments. Do as the Spirit leads you as we say. In Christ alone, my hope is done.
against my destiny. The power of hell, no scheme of man. Look how they schemed with the three Hebrew children. Now they schemed with Daniel. No scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home, whichever happens first. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. May we stand in that victory and scale the mountains that life will bring to us. Let's sing together, learning to lean. I'm learning to lean on Jesus, finding more power than I ever dreamed. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Maybe you'd like to stand as we sing this chorus together.
then we're going to sing as our benediction, the last part. Yes, I'm covered by the blood. I'm covered by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And as we uh, make our way out, uh, please do so in uh, order and uh, allow the spacing as uh, required. And uh, just take your time as you're going out this afternoon. Thank you for coming. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you during the days of this week. And uh, may you know uh, that we have God who is greater than all of our storms, greater than all the obstacles that might be put in our way. And we are covered by his precious blood. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for being with us here today. And Lord, as we leave this place, we pray that we would go leaning upon you, yes. trusting in your strength and power to keep us. And Lord, may we indeed experience victory each day as we put our faith and trust in you. Lord, have your way in our lives. Use us. Help us to live holy lives, Lord, yes, Lord. so that when people look at us, they will be able to say, we can't find any fault in them that they are trustworthy, that they have impeccable character, and Lord, that they would know uh, that we are children of God. <clears throat> and Lord, may we so live so that it would be evident that we belong to you. Dismiss us now with your blessing, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, yes, I'm